In the first episode of Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san 2, Takagi proposes a challenge to Nishikata. If you can hold my hand, you win. The fact that this challenge tricks Nishikata into admitting that he had something else in mind would lead a viewer to believe that it is a throwaway line, purely intended to trick Nishikata and nothing more. Little did we as an audience know that this was the beginning of an arc that would span the entire season. Handholding, as far as their narrative is concerned, is a symbol of developing their relationship beyond being friends. It represents the progression of their characters and the bond in which they share. As I said before, the hand-holding arc begins in Skipping Stones, where the challenge is first proposed and the starting line is set. Late in the story, Takagi is saved from falling into the river by Nishkata. In real time, this would have all happened so quickly that Nishkata's actions can only be attributed to reflex. This story tells us that Nishkata cares for Takagi on an instinctual level and Takagi is genuinely surprised by this. It also tells us that the only way Nishkata will hold Takagi's hand is by instinct to achieve an important goal, namely preventing her from getting hurt. Nishkata would have never consciously grabbed Takagi's hand, just like he would never consciously admit that he had feelings for her. But that's all due to his embarrassment and insecurities, something which he will grow beyond over the course of the series. Another important aspect of Skipping Stones is that Nishkata was given a chance to win, something that he claims to be his primary motivation. He had already done the hard part, all he needed to do was take credit. But he didn't. He wanted to instead avoid the embarrassment of performing an intimate gesture. We get our first step forward in Ice where Nishkata loses a game and is told that he needs to warm the winner's hands. He is reluctant to do so but after refusing to admit it, he begins to warm up his hand with the intention of holding Takagi's. This tells us as an audience that one way to get Nishkata to hold Takagi's hand is through obligation. When Takagi pulls a bait and switch and essentially tells Nishkata that he doesn't have to hold her hand, her jagged smile towards the end tells us that she is thrilled that Nishkata was seemingly going for it. When you compare this smile to the one she had the last time she was properly flustered, you begin to see a similarity that ultimately tells us she is not ready to hold hands with Nishkata, just like she wasn't ready for him to admit he enjoyed spending time with her in Critical Hit. However, she is not above making references to hand-holding and after finding out that Nishkata will hold her hand under the right circumstances, she begins to open herself up to the idea. She clearly discovers another one of these conditions in arm wrestling by using competition. At this point in the series, Takagi is able to hold Nishkata's hand just fine, and Nishkata is reluctantly okay with it as long as it serves to grant him a victory, already contrasting with his total reluctance despite victory in Skipping Stones. The biggest step forward for Nishkata in this story is that when he does hold Takagi's hand, he likes it. We get to hear him think about how nice it feels to hold Takagi's hand, and after he inevitably loses, instead of lamenting his loss against Takagi like he usually would, he laments losing to her dainty hands. Even if he won't admit it, Nishkuta enjoyed the sensation of holding Takagi's hand, and Takagi seemingly realises this, given her big toothy grins after the game. Takagi doesn't grow in this story per se, but the fact that she was able to hold Nishkuta's hand while maintaining her composure tells us that she has at least grown since ice. After this, Takagi seems more interested in the idea of holding Nishkata's hand, so much so that in Bicycle she explicitly says so and even gives Nishkata a chance to win if he acknowledges this desire. Given that Nishkata wasn't aware of the latter point, he doesn't get an opportunity to grow in this story, but Takagi gets a chance to express how much she wants hand holding to become a common habit between them. She soon discovers that Nishkata may feel the same way in Revenge when she tries to fluster him into losing a game. This is a common tactic for her, but Nishkata's response is not what she was expecting. Instead of becoming embarrassed or distracted about Takagi's declaration on holding hands like he normally would, Nishkata instead imagines holding Takagi's hand and loosens his grip as to not hurt her. This tells us that Nishkata is just as interested in holding Takagi's hand as she is in holding his. Again, showing us that he has progressed in this regard since arm wrestling. Of course, Takagi is surprised by this and remembers it going forward. We get to see Takagi put this newfound understanding to the test in Camping Trip, where she again proposes the challenge, if you can hold my hand, you win. This time she has an ulterior motive, to get him to hold her hand in a way wherein a rumour states they will fall in love. What's interesting about Nishkata is that he seemingly accepts the challenge knowing that he will be holding Takagi's hand anyway in the folk dance. 
the Nishkata we started with this season would likely have tried to avoid holding a hand altogether, but he has gone from no hand holding under any circumstances to I'll hold her hand if it means I can win. Of course, this confidence is gone by the time he has a chance to win, and his hesitation costs not only him his victory, but it also has some severe consequences for Takagi. Of course, the status quo is reclaimed by the end of the episode, and Takagi seemingly learns that just because Nishikata cannot hold her hand, read accept her feelings right now, does not mean he never will. By the time we get to Nurse's office, Nishikata has seemingly become a little more used to the idea of holding Takagi's hand. This is evidenced in the third and final scene where Takagi proposes the challenge to Nishikata, if you can hold my hand, you win. The first two times he was challenged to do this, he outright rejected it, then conditionally accepted it respectively, but this time he sits silently until his hand ever so slightly budges. It's unclear whether or not this budge was going to be a hand holding attempt, but Tagagi pumps the brakes on the interaction, allowing Nishkata to distract himself and ending the game. Seeing his contemplation in holding her hand may have been enough for her at the time, or perhaps she decided that she doesn't want their first real hand holding experience to be the result of a game, hence why she never challenges him to hold her hand in this way again. Of course, the hand-holding arc ends spectacularly in the final episode of the season. Nishikata has gone from not wanting to hold Takagi's hand under any circumstance, to reluctantly doing it for obligation, to willingly doing it for victory, to full-blown hand-holding without any sense of obligation or win condition. Takagi is surprised to have her hand held, but seemingly is able to keep most of her composure and accept the gesture. There are several reasons that Nishikata holds Takagi's hand in the last episode that relate to his character growth and the narrative up to that point, but that is going to be a discussion saved for the Summer Festival analysis. A time of writing, there is no Season 3 confirmed, but if there is, I hope that an early story in the series will be an adaptation of Chapter 100, Prayer where Nishikata holds Takagi's hand with seemingly little to no sense of shame or embarrassment. Sure, it wasn't his idea, and it is for the sake of victory, but the fact that he considers it an obstacle that is easily overcome says that he is much closer to seeing hand-holding as a more mundane part of their relationship, proving definitively that they have grown closer. And that is exactly what the hand-holding arc has been all about, seeing these two become closer and wanting to express their connection in a physical way. And that is it for this video essay. Thank you to Orion Train, Quincy Chamberlain, Lars Espen, Data52, Jaman5, and Savos2342 for supporting me on Patreon. If you want to join these wonderful people or the fine folks on the Discord server, you can do so via links in the description. I have done some form of analysis on every story I have mentioned in this video, so check out my channel if you're interested in that. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.